Hey everybody, welcome to this month's tips and tricks video. Um, this one is kind of a back to basics um, video topic. I seem to be running into a lot of questions regarding cutting parts, um, different ways to cut parts, what the differences are between the different types of cuts, and this you know, typically is covered during the normal Tecla training to some extent, um, but maybe it's just not clear because um, a lot of the training is going to be involving components, not really manual cutting and shaping parts. Um, so I just wanted to do a, a breakdown of the different cut types in Tecla, when to use them, how they're going to affect the parts, how they're going to affect CNC data, um, and just some general tips on using these things. And so, like I said, it's kind of a, a basics video, but I've gotten enough questions about it in recent days that I thought it might be worth putting this together. So um, I'm going to be talking about, on the edit tab here, we've got four cutting tools. I've got a polygon cut, a line cut, a part cut, and a fit part end. And I think that fit part end is the one that people get tripped up on the most and uh, kind of when to use it and what the point of it is. So um, first things first, I guess I want to mention, you notice that I'm looking at this beam in a 2D view. I'm looking at it square from the side. That's something that I always recommend when you're using most of these part, uh, most of these, uh, I almost said part cuts, cut types. Um, the part cut is one that it doesn't really matter what view you're in, but all of the other types you're going to want to be in a, in a nice flat 2D view. You don't want to be trying to run a fitting on a piece like this. You're going to have unexpected results. Same thing with a line cut or a polygon cut. So the way I think of this is like I'm trying to put this piece on a workbench so that I can lay out straight lines. Okay, And I think that helps um, explain to some people why I want to have a nice flat square view looking at my part. So if I want to cut through the side of this thing, I would want to look at it from the side. If I want to cut down from the top, I would look at it from the top. So, you know, get a 2D view that works well for what you're trying to do. So next, let's talk about the different straight line cuts. So fittings and line cuts, or a fit part end and a line cut. So this piece from handle to handle is 10 feet long. Okay, that's the, the basic length of this part. A line cut can only shorten a part. So if I wanted to shorten this part, I can activate the line cut command. I pick on the object, I pick two points, and these two points can be square, these two points can be angled. I don't need to pick all the way through a part. I can pick partially. Um, I'm simply trying to define a cutting plane or a you know a cutting direction. Um, so I can pick another part, uh, another point, excuse me, and then I can pick which side of this I want to remove. So if I click over here, you can see that it removes the right hand end of the piece. Okay. Now, when you see in the model, you can actually see these cuts. Let me rotate this a little bit. This one's actually pretty clean. Sometimes you'll see these cuts be much, much larger than the actual part. That's okay. It doesn't mean anything is wrong. You'll just see them sticking off to one side or the other. Fittings especially seem to do that a lot. But if you see that happen, you know, no big deal. But the cuts in Tecla are physical things. So this is an object. You know, I can select it, I can delete it, and the beam comes back. So that's important with all of our cut types. So if I go back to my 2D view and zoom in back on that end again, um, so like I said, a line cut is used to make a part smaller, obviously, that we would always think, yes, of course, a cut makes a part smaller, but I'm explicitly saying that because a fitting not necessarily, is only making parts smaller. But a line cut, uh, it's great for just a straight line clip. Um, I don't usually use this to change the gross length of a part. I use this if I'm just removing a corner or, I'm re or it's like a secondary cut. I don't use this as a primary cut on something like a beam. So a real world use case for me would be like, clipping something like that, right? So I'm not trying to shorten the actual member, I'm just trying to clip a corner off of it. That's primarily what I use a line cut for. Now a fitting works in a similar fashion, but it's a little bit different. So we're gonna talk about some of those differences. A fitting is meant to be the primary cut on a 
part like this. Uh, we'll say an extrusion or you know some sort of linear object like a beam or a column. A fitting is meant to be the primary gross length cut. So if I pick a part, it works a little bit similar. So I pick, on, pick the fit part end, I pick the object. Once again, I pick two points. I don't have to pick all the way through. I can just pick a direction. Let's say I wanted to do, you know, well, in this case, uh, because I don't have an ortho tracking on, I'll just snap to the underside of the flange here. But you can see that it essentially does the same thing, but I don't have to pick which side to remove. The which side to remove is automatically inherited by which side of the midpoint I'm on. So if I'm over here to the right of the midpoint and I pick two points, it's going to cut off the right end of the beam. If I'm over here on the left end of the midpoint, it's going to cut off the left hand of the beam. Okay, so a fitting automatically assumes you mean from halfway, you know, from the halfway point, oh, that end, right? So the fitting is just going to cut that off for you. But a fitting will also extend a part, and that's why fittings are great for miter cuts and things like that. I can pick two points, almost like you saw me do with that line cut, but now it's actually extending the part up as well. So again, picture like two pipes coming together at a 90 degree angle. I need to miter cut the two. I can put a fitting on each one to create that extension as well as the trimming back. So this physically will change the length of the part, but it will also affect the gross length of the part in your CNC files. So if you are dealing with like a saw cut and then a supplementary cut, the saw cut should be a fit part end. The supplementary cut should be a line cut. So picture something like this, where I want to create a shape like that, you know, this beam might be a, a very steeply sloping beam or a ridge beam or something like that. So for a lot of CNC, this is all I need is the 10 foot two, the actual cut length. But some people need, let me throw a construction line in here. Some machines need that all the way out here as the primary saw cut. And then this is a supplementary cut and a fitting will actually give us that length in the NC file if we need it. So the fitting is a very powerful tool, but you can only use a fitting once per end. I can't go fitting and fitting, right? It's going to pick one of them. It's not going to, you know, do it twice because you're going to extend and then extend again and then extend again and again, right? That gets, gets confusing. So a fitting should be used once per end. And then if I need to add additional shape, I'll use line cut if it's a straight line cut. Right, so I'll use the fitting on here um, once. Again, if I were to rotate this view just for, you know, kind of touching back on what we spoke about a minute ago, I see these boxes sticking off. Those are my cuts. That makes it a little bit easier for me to grab them, see them, delete them if I need to, right? So I can grab that fitting cut and I can delete it. I can grab that line cut and I can delete it. So um, just keep that in mind, you know, that's why they're there. Sometimes people see them and they go, what the heck is this box, you know, sticking out off the beam? It's just one of your cuts. No big deal. All right. Um, so the straight line cuts, a fitting or a line cut, are primarily used to just, you know, give me an overall shape. Um, I do want to note one more thing before I move on. <laughs> I just thought of the fittings. I see this a lot. Just because you can extend a part doesn't mean you should abuse the privilege, okay? So if I have this beam and it's currently 10 feet long and I have something I need to connect it to out here another 5 feet, don't use a fitting like this to extend that part out. Um, you know, in the model, sure, it looks fine, but it's going to create problems. You're going to see issues with connections um, not applying to that far end because, you know, Tekla has no idea why this piece is five feet longer than it's claimed to be initially. Um, at, on the flip side of that, don't use a fitting to cut a ton off, you know, so don't have a handle out here somewhere and then use a fitting to shorten this beam by, you know, 40%. It's just bad modeling practice. It's just weird. <laughs> you know, just use it within reason, right? Just to add a few inches here and there uh, if you need to. Don't have that handle way out here or way back, um, you know, away from the actual physical part. 
Okay, so getting into those other uh, cut types. The polygon cut tool is one of the cuts I probably use the most. Um, it is used for creating shapes. So in a simple example, let's say I wanted to create a cope in this beam. I would activate, activate the polygon cut, pick on the part, and then I can come in here and trace the shape that I want. So I can come in here and create a cut, middle mouse click to finish, just like I'm making a contour plate, and now I've got that polygon cut. And again, remember that in Tecla, a cut is a physical thing. This is a, a you know, this is an object that I can select. And more specifically, when you get into these polygon cuts, and again, um, we have one more cut to, to talk about. If I go into my properties, this is treated as a plate. So it has depth. This is 7 and 3 sixteenths wide, so it's automatically trying to be a little bit wider than the thing that I'm trying to cut. It's got handles, like a contour plate. So if I need to, I can say grab two of these handles, and if I wanted to move them down another inch, I can do so. If I want to enable direct modification and I want to work with this cut that way, um, I can select this and now I can do some drag and drop funky stuff with it. So it's just like a contour plate. As an example of this, let's say I wanted to get a top view. Let's open up a top view here. Um, we'll just go with the planet zero because that's where this beam is. So let's say I wanted to cut down through the top of this flange but not all the way, okay? So a polygon cut, remember a polygon cut has depth, it has a thickness, it's a, it's a plate. I can come in here, activate the polygon cut, do the same thing, let's, let's try to come to the inside of that flange. So I'm just drawing a shape and then middle mouse click to finish. But this is now, let's go to the other end, you know, it's going all the way through the part. But if I don't want it to, I can just simply change the thickness of the plate. I only need it to come down an inch to just cut through that flange. There is an offset happening here. Uh, let me change that offset to zero. There we go. So basically, it was trying to offset itself to center with the depth of the beam. So initially, you know, it's trying to cut through the full thing. Um, but I can just do that. I can create my cut, and then it's a plate. Come over here, change the thickness, change the position, and get it exactly where I need it to be. Okay? Now, these polygon cuts, um, again... They think of them as a plate, as a, as a sub, uh, subtraction plate. Just like a plate, let me turn off my direct modification, I can grab these corners, double click on them, and I can add chamfers to them. So if I needed to create a rounding on this thing, you know, maybe I wanted to add a two inch rounding radius on this, I can do so. You don't need to try to cut, 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 cut some sort of circular shape. All of the same chamfer options that you have on a contour plate are also available here on this polygon cut because it's basically a plate. Um, so same thing for circular cuts. Um, if I wanted to make a circular cut, let's do this. Um, two ways I could do this. I could come in here and cut a box. Uh, let me come down from the top a little bit and we'll make a five by five by five. And we could come in here and grab these corner chamfers, and I could make them all two and a half inches. So if I wanted to make a round cut, we'll do this. I probably should have just copied that over. Let's copy that to the remaining. We'll modify you, and we'll modify you. There we go. So that's one way to get a round hole, right? It's just a, a corner, uh, four corners, and then you add four radii to those corners. Um, you could also do something like a diamond. Now this is a little bit more difficult for me to freeform <laughs> make, so we'll just, uh, we'll try to cheat this here a little bit. We'll go down four, and then I'll go over uh, two, 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 and I'm just using a lot of control click right there uh, to set an offset. But instead of trying to add four roundings uh, to it, what I'll do is come in here and to the top and bottom, I will add an arc point. So if I add an arc point to the top and I add an arc point to the bottom, same, same concept, right? So I'm just adding opposing radii 
uh, and it's going to give me a round cut. Now you can see how it is a bit segmented here. It's just a visual thing. If I were to generate a CNC file of this, it does come out as a smooth round hole, and there's there's adjustments for that uh, on the NC file side, and there's also adjustments for that on the modeling side if you did want to see this smoother. Um, but don't be concerned if you see that it looks like a you know 12 cell 12 sided polygon. It's not actually going to be like that. Okay. So um, the last cut I'm going to talk about today is going to be a part cut or cut part with another part. Um, you can use this for a variety of things. You could use this for pipe penetrations. You could use this for pipe to pipe connections. So let's do let's try something like that. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to load a pipe shape. What size is it going to be a six inch? Sure, that works. So let's uh, let's model in a quick vertical pipe here and then I'll come in here and model a Shouldn't have held control on that one. Let's do that again. So we'll start here. And we'll come up. Something like that. Okay. Now there are components that will do this, but again, we're sort of learning about manual cuts today. Um, so if I were to go to the Edit tab and I say Part Cut, you want to pick the part to be cut first. So I'm going to cut the part that I need notched around that other pipe then pick on the other pipe, and you can see how, again, let me make this rendered solid, we can maybe see this a little bit better, what's actually happening with the cut is it's going to create a, a thing, it's a physical part there. Let's actually see if we can hide this. There we go. So this is a physical part, just like all the other cuts, and look, it's actually being called out as a pipe. So it is still a pipe profile. Um, that means I could change it to a different profile if I needed to make this cut a little bit larger. I can come in here and I can change this cut shape to be an 8-inch pipe instead of a 6-inch pipe. And then if I were to redraw my view, I still have the 6-inch pipe left behind, the physical one. So the part cut simply creates a negative version of the part being used to create your cut. Now... Where I really use that concept of, of bumping up the size would be something like a pipe penetration. So let's make another one of these pipes, but through a beam. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. Let me turn off some of my uh, transparency. And I'm just sort of willy-nilly throwing something through the middle of here. So let's drag you out a bit. Okay. Um, now, let's go through our part cut. So I'm going to say part cut. I want to cut the beam with the pipe. Well, I'm just making this as a penetration. I'm not responsible for the pipe, so I can go ahead and delete the pipe, leaving the, the diameter behind. And then I can come in here and change it to whatever size I want. If I want to make this a standard D10 diameter circle, now I have a 10-inch circle. It's not actually based off of a pipe. You know, it's not a Schedule 40 size. I'm just making a round hole. So that's yet another option. And that part cut can make things a little bit quicker if you just want to punch something uh, super simple through an object. Um, so that's a quick overview of the different cut types. A fit part end is meant to be the primary cut when shortening or lengthening a member by a little bit. A line cut is meant to be a supplementary cut to, you know, add a bevel or something like that. The polygon cut is for creating shapes and holes. And then the part cut literally creates a negative version of a part uh, to create that void or hole in the object you're looking at. So I'm going to wrap it up there. I can't believe this video turned, in, turned out as long as it actually did, but I hope that level of detail helped some people out and it gives us something we can reference back to. That's the great thing about videos. Um, as always, if you're looking for other tips or if you have some ideas or questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.